Hello, this is Nice Wonder. Welcome to the Now Man Show. We have a panel discussion right now on the subject of building coalitions to transform our society. I don't really need to explain that there are humongous crises everywhere we turn, it seems. In our communities, our states, our countries, and in our world. It can seem overwhelming at times, as well as a constant challenge for millions and now billions of us every day. There is poverty and homelessness. At least 100 million people in the U.S. alone have been struggling financially, especially since 2008, with no real relief in sight. As you know, there was the economic crash of 2008. Hatred and racism is on the rise with the open resurgence of Nazism globally and, and even more. There is endless war and accelerated degradation of the physical environment on the planet that we call home. It seems nothing of any real urgency, depth, and substance is being done, at least here in the U.S. We, the masses of people, need to be the change, and that means actions speak louder than words. Do you hear me? The purpose of this discussion is to focus on finding common ground, create coalitions, and finding ways to work together to really make the world better for all of us. So we're going to get right into this. In two minutes or less, I have Melissa Michelson here and Matthew Snyder, who will identify who they are as we do this. First question, give us your name, what organization that you represent, and that, what that mission is, and also what your personal goals are with the organization. I'll start with that now. Kyle on the timer, start now. My name is Dan Nicewonder. Um, I am the creator, host, and producer of The Now Man Show. I'm also, as nice wonder, a musician. I've worked in education finance for a lot of my career as well. And I'm associated in this program, and associate with Democracy at Work Pasadena, which is a part of the national organization Democracy at Work based out of Manhattan that focuses on the advocacy for worker cooperatives, which are democratically owned businesses where the workers are the owners, they make all the important decisions. And I'm working on an investment co-op idea and also doing this show, educating people about this because I think we need political solutions along with the economic ones, which is what I want to get into and I also look forward to engaging in that with my guests. How did I do? <laughs> okay, so now let's do the same thing and I'll uh, go here to my left, Melissa Michelson. Uh, in two minutes. Okay, uh, well you know me, my name is Melissa Michelson and um, I was a Bernie Sanders delegate uh, for 2016 and I was the elected whip for my uh, for Southern California um, and I went to Philly, it was an amazing experience and I was just super proud to represent the 46,000 people that uh, voted for Bernie Sanders in this district um, and when I came back I um, started um, wondering, well, now what? Now what should we do? Well, the Bernie uh, delegates were going in various directions, and one of the directions was uh, the Democratic Party. So I started a uh, Democratic club. It's called the Field of Burn Democratic Club of Los Angeles County, and we're a chartered um, uh, club within uh, all, you know, all of LA County. And so um, our, the mission of our club is, and I brought my business card, and on the back it says, by all of our endeavors, we seek to grow the community involvement in the Democratic Party by driving the values inherent to the party of the people. We will inspire and foster leadership among progressives in Los Angeles County based on the values championed by Senator Bernie Sanders. People before profits, money out of politics, fight for economic equality, racial and social equality, environmental justice, health care and education as a human right. So um, that's in a nutshell what the Fantastic. club does and my personal hope is um, as the founding club president um, my hope is to grow the club to have as many um, Bernie Kratz in the club as possible um, and essentially I, thank you <laughs> um, yeah. essentially um, yeah I mean to grow the club but to kind of be a, a place for people that you know basically find a place of Bernie Kratz that we can be together and we it is our club it's our home base and a lot of them also are involved in other Democratic clubs and I go to them but I don't feel at home like uh, like a Bernie Kratz club does. Awesome yeah. thank you very much and Matt Snyder here uh, also has been on the show before. Matt? Yeah uh, my name is Matt Snyder I'm a lecturer at the University of California in Riverside uh, 
I do work on a variety of things. I have a podcast called The Future is a Mixtape, which is imagining a post-capitalist society. It's a podcast based on designing and thinking about utopia and what that would look like, what would be the features, what are the aims, what are some of the ideas that would create the seedling for a new future. Uh, I also am the co-founder of an organization called The 28ers, um, which uh, started out of Occupy Riverside when that fell apart in 2011, 2012. We formed this um, new venture, 28ers.org, which is about having monthly events to build community and talk about money and politics and ask for a 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution because we actually need a 28th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. And so that's really important in the process because if we get a 28th Amendment, we can actually have public financing. And that's really, really clear. And so another thing about that is we, we do monthly events on various topics, so military industrial complex, the um, health care crisis, the um, uh, student debt, and we do different months and work with different organizations every month creating those intersections. I also am a volunteer for Wolfpack, and Wolfpack is doing the duty to call for a 20th Amendment passing state resolutions through a various number of states. We need 34, we have five, and once we get 34, we'll actually have an Article 5 convention, the first one since 1789. Wow. And so that's actually the architecture for a broad new future. Fantastic, that's great. So we actually hit our goal, that's great. So go on to the second question um, in a minute or less. Please give us your, your own personal goals and priorities that you would like to see accomplished in the community, in the country, and even the world here and now. Melissa? I'll, I'll I can easily say in, the, in a nutshell, I want money out of politics. Mm -hmm. Just, that's it. You know, that needs to happen and public financing of, uh, yeah. of elections. And once we get that, we can proceed. But without that, we're not going anywhere. That's what I think. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go. We'll go this way this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I personally feel that uh, the first priority is making sure that uh, everybody has uh, healthy food, clean water, uh, a reliable and safe roof over their head without issues from you know, uh, in law enforcement, and et cetera. Uh, and also um, uh, have clean clothes to wear. And then that's the first part of the basic necessities. The second part of the basic necessities would be uh, a guaranteed jobs uh, plan, like Bernie Sanders uh, proposes. Um, along with that, maybe some kind of guaranteed uh, uh, universal basic dividend, which I can talk about later. Uh, and also uh, Medicare for all, so everybody has health care and also free education. Uh, I think we need to create a party that's national, a third party, and then we need to create a coalition with what's going on in Europe. Okay, I know that's a lot <laughs> that I just said right there. Obviously, um, when you've got time on your hands, you've got time to do research. Uh, and uh, so basically, now that it's open discussion. Now let's get into the core here. So, so the vibe I'm getting is, uh, is do you think that the coalitions politically are basically going to be focused around uh, uh, electoral politics and getting the money out of politics? I wish, but I don't feel it's happening. Yeah. I don't think coalitions are building around that. I mean, slightly, but... It's, it's really frustrating because essentially um, what's happened is after Bernie's revolution, right, which was the biggest, most successful f failure the left has had in its 40 years of failure. It's a successful failure, and that really matters. I mean, uh, the left has been basically letting the right and e economic right libertarians move the goalpost for 40 years, um, and just losing and losing and losing. And it was done smartly. It was done through the Perelman's, Mont Perelman Society, where libertarian thinkers like von Hayek and others organized a campaign to destroy unions. It's worked so successfully that Republicans are fighting with each other because they've won everything. They've literally won all the manifest destiny points for a kind of market of the world. And yeah. so that's why we have to address money in politics, I think, as the root, right? There was a f famous sign at an Occupy site, which is basically that essentially you know, the root of all politics is money, yes. right? And, and if we look at every decision that is bad, it's rooted by special interests and corporate money. And I personally worry about, about how to actually achieve having people have a roof over their heads, having them have a job, having them have 
um, food and, and all of that. When you know when it, what we're going to need for that to happen on mass is you know people in the government to run the, our democracy. Mm -hmm. And if they're not doing that, then you know we're not going to have we're not going to get those things. We're going to get them piecemeal uh, here and there. It's not going to be good enough. So we need to get rid of them, get new people in. But the only way we can do that is if we can get um, you know honest to goodness you know balanced politicians and that, mm -hmm. that want to do these things that mm -hmm. we want. We, we need our people in there and that's not going to happen unless money's out. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that uh, one of the things that I've come across and, and I think you know, it's inspiring you know, to see that finally, finally, Bernie has a proposal. We still don't see the final, the so-called, mm -hmm. or one of the final drafts even of the, uh, uh, the uh, I guess he calls it the proposal for a guaranteed jobs bill, which would have a component in it for education, which would include health care, so there's more jobs for health care. And infrastructure, by the way, people, is not just rebuilding roads and bridges, it's also public transportation. And then uh, the electrical grid, you know, transitioning to solar and, and wind rather than fossil fuels, who are the big political contributors, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and obviously there's, there's a connection uh, to the fact that uh, we need a political party to challenge the two-party duopoly, or as Gore Vidal says, the one property party with two right wings. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, almost a quote, might even be a quote. And I agree with that. I mean, I think we need a third party presence. What's, I know there's a couple of things I wanted to bring, make sure I brought up in here. I know we have, we've seen the teachers uh, strikes and we've yes. seen the students protesting, demanding gun control laws, which is awesome. And now we're we're seeing the the poor people's movement, which you know uh, groups are forming um, all over the country. There would have been more here on the panel today, but they are in Sacramento right now at a rally for the poor people's movement, and that's bringing back Dr. King's uh, idea of you know um, anti-poverty, anti-war, anti-racism, and they're adding to that this time around pro-environmentalism, mm -hmm. and they're going to reunite 50 years anniversary in the, the mall in Washington, D.C. on June the 23rd. So if anybody's there, going, let's go. There's, there's, <laughs> there's genuine affection I have for a lot of these forms of mobilization. There really is. I mean, Ellie Kaufman in The Guardian, a scholar on activism, says that we are in the golden age of activism. Mm -hmm. So yes. you would have to go back to the Vietnam War, and he's saying, based on the, the data that they have, it's limited, that the amount of protests, the sizes of them, the continued uh, reemergence of different protests every monthly cycle is profound. Yes, but the problem is, it is. are they effective? And right. I would say, no, they're not, because they're basically pivoting and positioning for attention a very, right. a very small amount of people that are actually going to be activists. And there's not a direct call that's often accompanied with these things that, that unites all these alphabet soups of social justice issues. And so that's really important is that there is this kind of contingency on a, a shared goal. And for me, money in politics is the most intersectional social movement. There is no social movement more intersectional. So if you actually want to get serious with me or others, you have to say, how can we change rifle laws? How can we change union rights? We have to go back and address the faulty logic of the Constitution, which is that it's been taken over and rewarded for bad ends. Yes, I exactly. I feel like uh, you know, all these protests and um, you know, all, this, all this attention on the issues is great. Mm -hmm. I like that, that's very important. But there's, again, where's the, what is the solution? Yes. And the solution is money out of politics. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it always goes right back to that. It, and we're so busy back. talking about our, um, you know, I, I hang out with my fellow Bernie burners and activists, and we all have our pet project issues yes. that we love so much. Yes. But I'm just like, well, we're not going to get anywhere. You know, you want me to go, um, you know, canvas over here and do all these things. But in the end, I, I don't know. It's right. Not I, I totally agree because money out of politics. that's one of the reasons why I wanted to start this <laughs> discussion mm -hmm. and I'm doing it you know uh, also with the cooperative uh, idea mm -hmm. you know uh, as an educational thing yeah you know it's, it's a question of ordering because like for me I am I believe in a utopian horizon and so if you're gonna have all these things integrate you have to think about implementation viability and mass movements yeah and you got to get them all organized in a way that makes sense so I want co-ops the whole reason why I want money in politics is to get co-ops. Right, but you right. can't get co-ops if you don't have single payer. That's and the right. barrier for joining a co-op is I'm going to hurt my, my children by going into a game called co-ops that may not work out. 
And so SB 562 in California was a golden moment that we can still actualize because that creates co-ops. So there's movements that create other movements. That's but right. money in politics is a thing that we all agree on. Nine out of 10 Americans will tell you that money's hurting our political system. Nine out of 10. That's more than angels. Is, that's more than angels society. and global warming. That's more than angels and global warming. Really? Mm -hmm. Angels too? Angels and global warming. Nine out of 10. Wow. So organize on that. Wolfpack's doing that kind of really good work, and the 28ers, we think we're doing that good work. And when we do get that in there, we have multiple Bernie Sanders. We have thousands of them. How long, if, if we use the Wolfpack model, though, which is based on the Constitution, which is a problem in and of itself, because mm -hmm. most even European nations have multiple constitutions in their history, mm -hmm. and we only have one, which is kind of like a religious experience. We can't. And we, we add these amendments to it, it's, but it still keeps it. It's, 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 it's doable. basically still the same. It's, it's doable when you have a consensus. Now, I don't think we can have a consensus on a Medicare for all like we can for money in politics or, uh, or ending the military industrial complex, which is my greatest fantasy. But, you know, and I started as an activist, as an anti war activist against Iraq war. But I realized that we weren't winning anything because I'm going over a, like a, a wound, but I'm not going to the actual source of that wound. And right. all activists fundamentally have to see the material outcome of the fact that their pet cause or their alphabet issue isn't addressed because you don't hit what's called the 3.2% rule. There's actually data on this, which is if you want to overthrow a dictator, which in our case is money in politics, you need to hit 3.2% of the population that's involved as activists, that are mobilized. If we continue to, to fractionalize like we are, we're never going to hit 3.2%. Mm. But I can say, hey, money in politics affects your issue, yep. your issue, your issue, and you're not getting them solved until you deal with this issue. You know, what's interesting, too, is that you know, even though Europe, the EU is a whole different uh, uh, issue as mm -hmm. far as they have different issues they have to deal with, mm -hmm. but uh, one of the things that impresses me about DiEM25 uh, is that there's now 10 countries involved, mm -hmm. and they're uh, actually creating a party. This is the first time it's ever been done in the history of Europe where in, in the U, EU parliament. Trans-state They party. are a trans uh, country state. or trans-state party Ten countries on board, and Yanis Varoufakis, the former finance minister of Greece, said that he doesn't, even, he can't even think of all the ten countries that are off the top of his head. He knows Greece is in it, he knows Italy's in it, yeah. and Spain, and Portugal. He said, I can't even remember all. But, but what it is is they're focusing on, uh, like for instance, um, creating a movement yeah. and creating a party to it, get in the the parliament this year. And there's there's such a groundswell of support for them. They're probably going to have any problem well, to get a in. Pr there's a, there's and a, there's not a, only that, mm -hmm. but uh, they are they are doing a manifesto. So they got number one. They, they they're they're creating what they call the um, the Diem Spring, based mm -hmm. on Arab Spring, mm -hmm. which you, those of us know is Occupy Wall Street mm -hmm. came out of that. Think about that, people, mm -hmm. for my, our friends and allies here in the U.S. And that's uh, and then the manifesto. Mm -hmm. That they're creating is based on the left wing of the Labour Party in the UK. Their manifesto. Well, right? if we so had a party that was a money out of politic party, people's party, <laughs> yes, we'll all go in there. We yeah, need absolutely. that here. When, That's well, it. What End would you story. think? What would you guys think of a Deist party, democracy in the United States party? And then we would have a, that means nothing to me. I the, need money out of politics party. Well, <laughs> and make make money out of politics a major part of that party's well, platform, and then creating coalitions those ways, and also think about the fact that if we create a coalition with DiEM25 in Europe, this is a global oligarchy thing, mm -hmm. they, would ha they would be so afraid of us, mm -hmm. they would have to sure. get on their and knees. There's, there's right? definitely, they would definitely. Have to. That's a massive coalition. There's definitely a desire for me and others to see kind of international solidarity and socialism rise again from the ashes. And, you know, there's... There's certainly hope for that, and I think what's good about DM is it's not just out of thin air; it's working from the Pirate Party. Right. Pirate Party was a, a, a multi-state movement right. to, to protect privacy and, of course, uh, free speech on the internet. And so it rose very quickly, but that's not enough to sustain itself. And so in Iceland, it's kind of not gone anywhere because it's so narrow in its vision. It has no fundamental economic vision where DM25 does have an economic vision. Yes. He calls it the New Deal for Europe. The New Deal for Europe, which yes. Is basically he calls organizing, it the Green New Deal for Europe. Organizing against the bankers, because the yeah. bankers yep. now control German society. It's yep. not the, the, you know, uh, Janus Varoufakis talked to German officials and said, well, we wish we could help you, but the bankers won't let us, mm. right? Yep. And so you act, at some point you have to organize that. But for me, 
there isn't that sense of a national connection in the U.S. So I always feel yes. we'll be confined that's by right. national identity. And that's is, that's by design the divide and conquer thing, which is why I, I having worked with Melissa and, mm. and you know the Bernie you know Sanders campaign mm. directly and, and yeah. in our relationship talking to you, I feel the frustration that we all have. You know, and there's just too many issues where we're being taught about intersectionality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's there's too many issues. Everybody's got their little pet e ego there, issue that they're working there, on. There has to be prioritization. Yeah, there has to be prioritization. And the, the, the notion of intersectionality is like that there's all these forms of suffering matter. They have to identify them equally. But that doesn't mean we'll be able to solve them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. You have right. to actually look at, like, let's say a, a, you see an impacted body in a war zone. It's got shot in the leg. It's got a shot in the heart. It's, it's got a broken arm. It's got a wound in the head. You're going to want to look and say, which, one, which wound is the worst? Which one should I operate on? And the left, by deigning that intersectionality is the created core, is saying that I'll work on all these wounds at the same time while the person's bleeding in the heart. Hmm. And so money in politics is the way that you navigate power, is by organizing for that. And there's a process. ERA, Equal Rights Amendment Act, was supposed to be the 28th Amendment. It got very close. And uh, the, the, war, the, the war in Vietnam caused a state-to-state -state movement for the right to vote at 18. It was so popular, it was adopted yes. by Congress later. We know money in politics is not going to be solved by Congress. Thankfully, Wolfpack knows that. And so Wolfpack is passing the resolutions through the states. Um, but how many states? My question 34. Is, they have so 34. 34 on board so, now? You no, know, no, they have five. They need yeah, 34 to pass right. it. That's right. But they had four states, Dan, and four states in nine months. But how, but how long did it take him to get Rhode Island, though? Well, this is the problem is Bernie Sanders. Bernie yeah. Sanders Bernie Sanders was like the McDonald's of movements because right. he brought everyone to the get the Big Mac. And so Wolfpack was going to be the biggest movement before Bernie announced his a campaign in 2015, mm. 2000, yeah, 2015 in the summer. And then all of the Wolfpack members moved into Bernie. His mm -hmm. campaign. campaign. Yeah. And so there was a kind of yeah. general movement towards money and politics, yeah. but now it's back yeah. into electoral politics. Right. So we're right. trapped in the cycle that the media wants us in, which That's is right. every two years right. we have to think only in terms of change through that two-year process. Maybe right. Bernie will take this up again yes. after he's done the Medicare and for he, All, the jobs, the inequality. And he wrote and an amendment to get money out of politics. Right. Yeah. So there's lots of them. There's we, also, we, I yeah. want to tell you guys about a group called Represent Us. Mm -hmm. yes. And they're going from the bottom. You know, there's Wolfpack. I mean, they're different. But yeah. we can go, one strategy is from uh, national and amendments and whatnot. And then grassroots can just immediately start mm -hmm. limiting uh, donations uh, in their local politics and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing in city council in my town um, in gra yeah, yeah. In, uh, grassroots we got together we wrote to get we wrote an, um, a bill and that's going to be part of our city charter and yeah. we just need to just need to get you know thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of signatures but yes. we have six months to do it we're going door to door and that's it we're we're going to have a campaign uh, limit of $250 per city council donate, donate, don, donation, mm -hmm. donor. And, um, you know, right there, it's done. I mean, if we can get it, if we can get organized. But that's something that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and here's the thing I want to propose, okay, since this is a panel discussion about coalition, and I'm not just about talk, I'm about action. So, and I know we have social media we can use, like Facebook, you mm -hmm. can create a group. Uh, and also, you can do a public event. And, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I represent Democracy at Work Pasadena, or Democracy at Work, uh, which is a headquarter out of Manhattan. You have Wolfpack mm -hmm. and... Uh, 28ers. The 28ers. Mm -hmm. So you have the national and the local mm -hmm. connection to the money out of politics. You are the co-founder of Feel the Burn Democratic Club and the San Gabriel Valley um, Progressive Alliance. Progressive Alliance. Progressive mm -hmm. Alliance. Mm -hmm. So here's a way we can bring five groups together right now, mm -hmm. create some kind of public event, and actually there is going to be one I'm working on uh, creating one here in Pasadena, Great. North Pasadena. We're going to be uh, having a movie night, mm -hmm. and we don't have a name yet for what we want to call the group. <laughs> Are you making a movie? Uh, yeah. No, we're, it's, it's a movie night. We, and by the way, I have a questionnaire. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'll send it out to you guys uh, once we get it done. It's mm -hmm. just two questions, a list of movies to watch, and a list of issues. And, you, and uh, I'm going to lay it out as mm -hmm. pick four. Mm -hmm. Pick four movies you'd like to see. Pick four mm -hmm. issues you want to focus on. Mm -hmm. We'll have a whole like 4 p.m. to whenever, you know, yeah. to, and people can socialize, talk. We can start creating an actual coalition mm -hmm. of different groups. So already, I could invite, you know, five groups. Actually, six if you include Democracy at Work Los Angeles. So mm -hmm. that's a start just with the three of us. 
because we need to do a coalition in, in mm -hmm. our areas, in our uh, city, mm -hmm. you know, and we need to make a presence, use media, use our activism, use our whatever, and, and actually get something done. And you know, and, and, and this sounds good because it's so important for us to put down our fetish dolls. Like yes. my, my life goal is to see the end of the military industrial complex in the United States, but I yes. know that I'm not going to be able to come back and solve that by itself. I have to think wider and larger. And, I think that's important, and I think we have to celebrate the fact that there, there's a vital left that hasn't been around in my whole life. We have, we don't we, really have a left, and I think and I, I want to close my part on this, and then we will do wrap-ups. Jan Svetofakis actually was asked at the New School in New York recently when he was there uh, what he what advice he has for our country, and I thought it's great advice to give. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Stop focusing on Russian collusion, Putin." <laughs> And what else did he say? I can't remember. He said, start focusing on the n getting rid of the neoliberal uh, mm -hmm. politics, mm -hmm. you know, and so you can, because that is, he said, the rest of the world agrees with you. We don't want Trump. We don't want Trump either. Mm -hmm. But if you, do, if you keep focusing on the neoliberal mindset, mm -hmm. you're going to keep bringing the right wing into the picture. It's just, it's just all going to end and collapse. I mean, Oxfam just had a study that came out that said in 2017, 82% of all the new wealth on the earth went to 1% of the population. That's right. And that capital growth keeps piling on top and That's creating right. a downward pressure That's where right. these inequalities get so large that the society breaks apart. And that's the history of empire, is that when the inequalities get so large, the empire can't hold. I'm so, honestly uh, not that disturbed. I'm very disturbed we have Trump, but as we were talking about in the green room before, mm -hmm. um, this is the beginning. You know, we've been building up to this point. At some point, it's right. got to crash, That's right. and then right. we can renew. And so I'm taking mm -hmm. a more organic approach, and I'm um, I think we're we're there. We're, I mean, to have children and you know high schoolers protesting on the street, walking yes. out in schools, mm -hmm. I've never that's seen right. that before. I know that's. You know? I'm, I'm very inspired by kids, that. Kids yeah. screaming for Bernie Sanders yes. like he's one of the members of the Beatles. He's a I, I mean, that's, that's a profound right. that's right. shock. Yeah. That's of, true. Of, right. of truth. So that I is. think we just have to hold tight. We keep pushing. We you know mm -hmm. we're not gonna we're not you know this isn't the the end of the world if we can just survive yeah. Trump, get him out. I think we're we're gonna see some good horizons, sunny horizons coming soon. Well, we definitely need to focus on the uh, progressive agenda, get mm -hmm. the money out of politics, mm -hmm. and let's start a uh, meeting, and we'll have that uh, here in Pasadena. And, and if you're in the L.A. area, you're invited. Well, you, you want your group invited, let me know. Uh, the Now Man Show 2017 at gmail.com. Uh, we don't have enough time for closing statements, uh, but thank you guys thank so you. much for you're coming, welcome. and let's continue this conversation. Once uh, the Facebook page is created, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, I got your emails. We're going to start right here working, and you can join us as well. This is nice wonder. And uh, always, I like to say, of course, have fun to the nth degree. You got to have fun, but stay present in the moment. It's your, your life depends on it, especially now. So thank you for tuning in. Until next time.